Hello, my beautiful doves. Welcome back. So I'm super excited to announce that we've surpassed 500K subscribers. We're at half a million, which is incredible because I just never would have expected to grow so fast. Like I've only been doing this for a little bit over a year. So I'm just really amazed that so many people have bonded with me over their love for fashion history and costume design and who agree, I guess, with my takes on pop culture as well. It's really just, it's really nice. Um, the last time I did a Q&A was when I got 100K. So that was some time ago. And it was a live stream, which was really fun. But live streams do kind of make me nervous. So I don't know if I could do it again with this big audience. But yeah, I um, am really excited to do this. This is definitely deviating from my normal content. And I don't know how many of you will actually tune into this, but uh, if you're tuning in, thank you. And let's get started. So what is your go-to everyday outfit? This may be surprising for a lot of people, but I don't care about being fashionable every single day, especially during the summertime. It's just so hot that I, I don't know, I don't really want to dress well every day because I don't want to ruin my nice clothes with like sweat stains and whatnot. So my day-to-day -day outfit has really been just a denim skirt from this Japanese streetwear, streetwear um, brand called Hysteric Glamour. So I wear that a lot because it's just like easy breezy and it's denim so it matches with a lot of things. And then usually I wear like a little white tank top because again, I'm just like so hot. It's been awful in New York City. Talk about your hair. I can tell you use foam rollers. Curious to your method. So I don't actually use foam rollers. I use hot rollers. The brand that I use is the Remington Tight Curls and they don't actually sell the Remington Tight Curls anymore. I bought mine used off of eBay. Hold on, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a reference because I have to show you guys. Okay, okay. So this is what it looks like. It's, uh, I don't know, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 21 curlers in here and they're all really tiny. Um, if you look for hot rollers today, you'll probably see a set with multi sizes. And the reason I really like this set is because they're all the same size because for vintage hairstyles, you only need like tiny ones basically. So an alternative, if you don't wanna get a used set is, uh, this is something I learned from Dita Von Teese actually. You can buy multiple sets and then just use the uh, three quarter inch and one inch rollers because again, you don't need anything bigger than that. But if you do wanna get this set in particular, one thing you should know, one thing you should know is that uh, the clamps that they give you to keep the rollers in place are not these. The ones that the Remington Tight Curls officially came with will leave dents in your hair. They don't look like these, but you can also buy these from like any beauty supply store. So you don't need to like find a seller who's nice enough to ship the uh, curling set with these clips. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to styling my hair, there's no rhyme or reason, which is why my hair looks like different in like every video. I do use a heat protecting spray because they are hot and they are damaging for your hair. And I try to lock it in with hairspray. I did not spray enough today because my hair is like falling apart a little bit. But um, yeah, hairspray is extremely important. If your hair is like not crunchy, then it's probably not gonna stay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> When picking your outfit, do you think of an overall concept and choose which pieces fit together or build the outfit around one item? Also, congrats on reaching 500K. Your videos are so informative and bring joy to my heart. Oh, so sweet. Um, I think it depends on the day. Like sometimes I have a theme in mind. Sometimes like if I, especially if I bought something new and I haven't worn it yet, like I'll want to build an outfit around whatever new piece I've acquired. Once again, like I don't really have a rhyme or reason when it comes to doing anything. I just do whatever I feel like doing the day that I wake up. There's no 
bad method when it comes to creating an outfit. How do you even begin styling a character slash cast? Like what's the process? So I think for this question, they're referring to my restyling videos, which I've only made two of. But for those videos, when I'm styling a character, first I start with the color palette because most fictional characters have a color palette that they uh, subscribe to to really nail the character you have to nail the color palette. Like no one wants Daphne Blake to be wearing yellow and red, right? And then I kind of think of the personality and character traits that the character has and how I can reflect that in the clothing. So once again with Scooby-Doo, just because I know everyone's familiar with it, um, for Velma, in my styling for Velma, I had her look very librarian chic. I started with the orange and red to bring attention to her classic color scheme. And then I thought of how she's like very book smart and she, there's a lot of emphasis on her glasses in the original cartoon. So I wanted these like really funky glasses. Yeah, I just wanted something like nerdier to reflect her interests, but then also not too nerdy where she's not stylish because fashion is important to me. So I wanted her to look good. It's also helpful to be knowledgeable about a lot of brands. Like I keep up with a lot of different brands on Instagram and on Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest. Really any of those sites, if you're following the right people, like mood board accounts or whatever, you'll get updated on um, new and emerging brands and also archive collections, which are fun as well. Also the Vogue Runway app, which I highly recommend. For people first getting into fashion, what advice do you have as far as finding designers? Like I said, the Vogue Runway app is really good. It's basically an app that just uh, has photos of every new collection that drops. They have some older collections as well, like from the 90s, but they don't have that many of them. For 90s collections, it's probably best to go on YouTube and look for them. But if you don't even know any designers, yeah, the Vogue Runway app is good because they have all designers and you kind of just like go through them and pick and choose what designers you like. And then if you Google the designer and they've been around for longer than what Vogue Runway has on the app, then you can just go on YouTube and look at the collections there. Also, the book Survey of Historic Costume, which is a textbook on fashion history for every decade in the 20th century. It also lists the prominent designers of the time. So that's also a good resource for finding older designers who are no longer around anymore. What books do you recommend for those who really want to get into fashion history? Okay, it's almost like I uh, organized all these questions to make sense in the order that I'm reciting them. So Survey of Historic Costume, once again, it's a really good resource for people who don't know anything about fashion history, who don't have like a particular decade that they're really interested in because I think the book starts out from like ancient Greece or something, like somewhere really old and then it goes up to the 21st century. So of course the information is not gonna be like as dense as a book that is only focused on a decade or a particular time period, but it's a good resource if you're just trying to figure out what you like the most. And then once you pinpoint what you're really interested in, then you can find a book that is uh, more detailed. As far as like more specific books, I'm like in my stack. I also have more books than that are in the stack. I'm just like lazy with organizing my room. This book, The Corset, I don't know if you can read it from the screen, but that was my big resource for when I did my corset video. And it is just an amazing resource for anyone interested in corsets. It's by Valerie Steele, and any book that Valerie Steele has written or contributed to, I would highly recommend. What are your thoughts on dressing your body type? Okay, so I used to follow like Seventeen Magazine and Elle Magazine and, um, I don't know, Vogue or Teen Vogue or whatever. When I was younger, I would really flip through those magazines. There was like a lot of advice on what to wear based on your body type. And I was really obsessed with this for like a very small amount of time because I think it was a good way to figure out what was flattering and what silhouettes I should try out. If you're not really familiar with your own proportions or you're experimenting with new silhouettes, then 
following on a guideline that claims these things are objectively good on you, that can be very validating and make you feel confident. But at the same time, I think it's important to recognize that these guides tend to be very Eurocentric. They also tend to want to flatter certain features over others. The hourglass is supposed to be like the ideal body shape. And so a lot of what they tell you to wear is to basically create an hourglass shape. I think it's incredibly limiting and if you like something and this guide says not to wear it, then like, you know, fuck the guide, right? Like wear what you want to wear because ultimately these guides are about building confidence. And if you have gotten to a point past the need for these guides, then, you know, just don't listen to them because you know what looks good on you. You know what feels good. For instance, like I, once again, inverted triangle, very top heavy. They always say, don't wear anything that makes you look more top heavy. Well, jokes on them. I really like wearing poofy sleeves. So I will continue to wear poofy sleeves. And plus like in the 1930s and 40s, the whole like silhouette was very inverted triangle. So I think it just depends what you're personally going for. And you you shouldn't listen to anything that says otherwise. Uh, okay, most influential fashion decade in your personal style. So I think I'm really influenced by 1930s, 1960s, 1970s, and 1990s. But I've, I'm honestly like influenced by all decades. And for instance, um, I don't really like the drop waist from the 1920s on myself. So I can't really say the 1920s is, you know, my style guide, but I do really like skull caps from the 1920s. And I've been trying to integrate those more into my everyday look. So it's just picking and choosing. I'm also really into these Rococo era um, mule shapes that have been really popular lately and bonnets. <laughs> Victorian bonnets. How do you wear past decade clothing without looking costumey? I think when it comes to like fashion versus costume, uh, material quality really matters. So something that was made with cheaper materials is more likely to look more costumey than something that was made with really durable or nice materials. Which is why I've noticed that those vintage reproduction sites that are usually like fast fashion, um, and if you don't know what that means, there are basically like a lot of sites that reproduce vintage designs, but usually the reproductions are pretty cheaply made and so they come off like more costumey. But if you wear true vintage, I think it comes off less costumey because true vintage garments were usually well constructed and made from high quality fabrics. That's something to keep in mind, but I also, I don't know, like I think costume is not necessarily a negative thing all the time. I have this Elizabethan ruff collar that I got off of Etsy and I think it's just so fun, but obviously whenever I wear it, my outfits kind of look costumey. It's kind of hard to make this very Shakespearean uh, garment not look costumey in today's times. But you know, you just embrace that and you rock it. It's the mood for the day, you know? So what inspired you to get into fashion? What was the hardest concept to understand? I've always been inspired by fashion. I grew up watching Fashion Police, Project Runway, the Rachel Zoe Project, all with my mom. My mom is also a very stylish woman, so I've taken a lot of notes from her over the years. And I always like loved going shopping with her. And for actually a really long time in my life, I always consulted with my mom on clothes to buy because yeah, I just trust her taste. She's great. When it comes to the hardest concept for me to learn about it's definitely sewing construction because I'm not a good sewer and I've only done like a couple sewing projects though they definitely helped with understanding it more and the reason garment construction is like really important in fashion history is because the way that clothes have been constructed has changed so much like over the last like centuries and one of the ways to identify when a garment was created is by looking at the seams and by looking at things like zipper and how garments were hemmed and etc. So not understanding it is definitely a crutch. So I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> if you could swap closets with anybody, real person or fictional, who would you choose and why? I don't know because I don't actually think my style is that cohesive. I think I have a lot of different aesthetics going on in my wardrobe and I like having that range. So, you know, uh, 
character that I have taken a lot of influence from is Fran Fine from The Nanny. But do I want to swap wardrobes with her? Actually, maybe because she does own a lot of expensive and nice clothes. But, you know, for my for my personal taste, like I wouldn't want to wear just a blazer and a mini skirt like every day for the rest of my life. I like having a range. And so it's hard for me to think of a fictional character that has that kind of range. Uh, does style imply sticking to a certain aesthetic? Absolutely not. Um, why did I say that like that? I don't know. I think a lot of the pressure to stick to an aesthetic comes from curating a brand image across your social media, creating this consistency because followers like consistency and, you know, everyone wants to be like kind of like an influencer. You don't want to change up your content all the time because there's something very aesthetic about having a uniform feed, for instance. But I just don't believe in limitations because limitations restrict creativity, creative freedom, and one of my biggest joys in life is mixing and matching different garments and if i feel like i have to really hone in on one aesthetic like i'm losing that joy so yeah i don't think anyone needs to stick to a particular aesthetic if you don't think that suits your interests any tips on how to mix styles example dark academia and cottagecore i like both so Kind of going off what I said before, I think we just need to stop thinking in terms of aesthetics because if you're like thinking so deeply about dark academia and cottagecore, you're never going to be able to really mix it because if you mix it, it ultimately comes into something new. It's not going to be either of those things. So I think the best thing is figuring out what you like about cottagecore. Like, is it prairie skirts? Is it, you know puff sleeve dresses? Um, Is it gingham print? And then figuring what you like about dark academia. Is it tweed? Is it the color brown? Is it blazers? And then just building a wardrobe based on the kinds of garments you like. And then naturally you're going to style the garments together. Okay, next question. I never know how to make my outfits feel more 1920s and be goth at the same time. Help. Lucky for you, um, if you look up vamp, in the 1920s then you'll actually come across like some gothic 1920s movie stars also i think just the makeup of the 1920s is kind of gothic because if you look at like old films they use really dark eyeshadow and really dark lipstick it looks like black lipstick and black eyeshadow because of black and white film even though it wasn't actually and also like the really thin eyebrows that kind of give like morticia adams vibes so i think the makeup itself kind of lends itself to a very gothic aesthetic but in general my tip for wanting your look to be more of reflective of a specific decade is styling your hair or doing your makeup like that decade you could wear a completely modern gothic wardrobe but if you're doing finger waves in your hair and if you have those like arched pencil thin eyebrows like myself you're gonna give like a 1920s flavor to whatever your look is How do I find a timeless style slash wardrobe? I think it's quite difficult nowadays with trends. It's very easy to fall into overconsumption and buying stuff just because it's trendy. By the way, I love your content, Mina, XOXO. Thank you so much. Honestly, you just have to unplug. Like I don't use TikTok for fashion inspiration because I recognize that the fashion TikToks that do well and that show up on my Explore page tend to be based on trends. So where I get most of my fashion inspiration is from Pinterest and Tumblr, where I feel like I can curate what shows up on my feed a lot better than platforms like TikTok and even Instagram now. I definitely look to a lot of different media resources. I look to paintings and movies and TV shows and old magazines. And then I kind of create looks based on those influences but I don't like copy another influencer's look because I think ultimately the media that I'm drawn to and that I'm inspired by are things that I feel personally connected to and inspired by like for instance so I own a lot of white flowy blouses and I am going to stick with the white flowy blouses for a really long time because I have an emotional connection to what that represents. Like I love 18th century, I love 17th century, I love pirates and vampires, which are all images I think of when I look at my white flowy blouses. So think about what really inspires you 
And once you have an emotional connection to an item, you're less likely to want to uh, move on from it. If you could be a costume designer for an already existing movie, which movie would that be? Or if you could be a costume designer for a book adaptation, which book would that be? Congrats on 500 subscribers, Mina XX. Thank you. So I would not do a period drama because even though I really love period drama pieces, I just can't sew for my life. And you have to be really good at sewing to be a costume designer for more extravagant costumes. Um, so I probably do a contemporary costume design. Not that you don't need to sew for those, but it's a lot more like styling than it is like garment construction. I'm not speaking for all of them actually because there are some shows that do make their contemporary wardrobes from scratch, but you don't necessarily need to do that, if that makes sense. So I probably would wanna to do Totally Spies. Totally Spies was extremely formative for me growing up, and I think it would just be super, super cool to have new outfits for them every single episode and to really modernize it as well because those girls were always fashion forward. Also, they're rich, so you have like more of a budget. Their styles are definitely not as distinct as the girls from uh, Winx Club, for instance. So I would definitely differentiate them a little bit more, but they would all be pretty fashionable and on trend. So yeah, I would love to do Totally Spies. Netflix, if you're ever gonna do it, and you don't hit me up, I'll probably make a video about it and I will do a better job than you. Just kidding, please hire me. All right, last question. Do you have any advice for people trying to boost their confidence with fashion? How did you get past emulating others to finding your style? The second question I think I kind of already answered when I talk about what inspires me, but for the first question about confidence, honestly, like you have to not give a fuck which I know is really hard, especially depending on your environment and who you're surrounded by. And I've been really lucky for most phases of my life. I've never felt stifled by the people I've been around. Usually my friends like have never cared about how I dressed. And if they did, then I would promptly cut them out of my life because I don't need that kind of negative Nancy energy. So I genuinely believe that if you're being stifled by your friends or community, you should just wear whatever you wanna wear and that will kind of foster an inner confidence, right? Because you're expressing yourself the way that you want to express yourself and that inner confidence will attract people who will support you um, and what you do. So life is too short, honestly, to be worrying about anyone else's opinions. I know it's hard, but you just have to think about what really matters to you and how you really want to live your life. Like, do you want to live your life just dressing up in your room and never being able to dress the way you want to outside of the home? I mean, for some people, maybe, but if for you, that's like not your ideal, then you have to start romanticizing your life and do what makes you happy. I'm gonna sign off now because I've been talking for a hot minute. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little moment. <laughs> it's definitely different from my normal content and I definitely feel like a little bit awkward doing something like this. So I don't know if I'll ever do it again, maybe when I get 1 million subscribers. But until then, um, I'll just be doing my regular commentary stuff and I'll see you guys next week. So have a good day and goodbye.